All right, so let's face it. We all need to understand the Wiggers diagram to pass our exam. Inside and out, backwards and forwards, up and down. How do we do it? It's a complicated, it's a complicated piece of material. So basically what we need to do is break it down. There is no way we can memorize all these curves, the aortic pressure, ventricular pressure, atrial pressure. Let's simplify it. I'm going to tell you how to answer any kind of question given on the exam only being able to draw two simple pictures. Here we go. First picture you need to know how to draw. This here is a simplistic representation of the blood thro flow through the heart. Um, pul pulmonary veins into the atria, AV valve into the ventricles, aortic valve into the aorta. Okay, so we're going to interpret the Wigger diagram um, just focusing on the left side of the heart because the same events happen on both sides just with different pressures. So you may ask, what type of questions might I have on my exam? Well, let's, let's look at that. Okay, what is happening to atrial pressure, ventricular pressure, ventricular volume, aortic pressure when the AV valve is opened, the AV and aortic valves are closed, and the aortic valve is open? Wow, those, those are really tricky questions. How, how am I ever going to answer that? My gosh, my brain hurts already. Well, have no fear. So, the other important diagram I'm going to draw with you. We're going to do this one together. <clears throat> Zoom in so you guys can see what's going on here. Alrighty. <clears throat> there, that's a little better. So, First, we're going to start with something very simple. You've seen it a hundred times, if not more, an EKG. All right, so. Something like that, right? Now, we're going to label some very self-explanatory um, events using this EKG. First one, atrial contraction occurs here, right above the P wave. So we're going to write atrial contraction. Very good. Now, remember, atrial contraction comes over on top of the P wave because the electrical events in the heart always precede the mechanical events. So, electrical event mechanical event. And the reason there's a difference is the time it takes for excitation contraction coupling to occur. That's why the difference between the electrical and mechanical events is there. Now, next thing I'm going to label is ventricular contraction, which occurs, well, let's just say kind of like, not right at the beginning of this complex, but pretty, pretty close. Ventricular contraction. Okay, ventricular contraction. Now, it occurs closer because of the massive amounts of innervation, electrical innervation, and how quick the impulses travel through, um, through the ventricle. So that's why it's closer to the actual um, electrical events. Anyway. What else do I need to label on here to help me answer these questions? Um, we need to know when the AV valve closes. Now, let me show you how the valves work in the heart. So, here I am starting first phase. This valve is opened. This valve is the AV valve. This valve is closed tight. This is the aortic valve. Now, what happens next? Well, this valve closes, AV closes. Aortic opens, aortic closes, AV opens. Do you see how the blood can be pumped? That's important to remember the order or you won't be able to label your EKG correctly and then you won't be able to answer the questions correctly. So remember that. AV is open. <clears throat> okay? Okay. Now, so, 
when does the AV valve close? Well, it's the first thing that happens, and it closes right in the middle of this complex. So maybe I'll write it down here. AV valve closes. Very good. Now, what happens next? You should be able to tell me aortic valve opens. That happens right here when the QRS complex ends. So this one is aortic valve opens. Okay, so that's not too bad. We have two more things to label when we're done. Here, right in the middle, what happens? Well, aortic valve has to close. So here I am, aortic valve closes. And remember, I'm getting all, the, all of this information from the Wigger's diagram. But these are the key, the key um, events, if you will, that you need to remember. Okay, next. Last thing <clears throat> is the AV valve opens, and that's right after this T wave. So, AV valve opens, and then we're back to the beginning. So how does this help me? How does this help me answer my questions? Well, let's look at it. My first question. <clears throat> what is happening to the atrial pressure, the ventricular pressure, the ventricular volume, the aortic pressure when the AV valve is opened? So it, it requires a little thought. It does, but not too much. Um, when the AV valve is open, so we look on our little diagram here, we find when the AV valve opens. Well, that looks like it's at the very end here. So we come over to our picture. Now, when the AV valve is opened here, we look back. Oh, look, the aortic valve is closed. Okay, so the AV valve is open, the aortic valve is closed. Perfect. So, what do you expect to happen? Well, we know that this phase here is a period where everything is at zero because the atrial are kind of hanging out and resting, the ventricle are hang hanging out and resting, so for all intents and purposes, the pressure is zero in both, okay? Now, might not be that intuitive, but if you know a little bit about the ventricle and you know that a little bit of blood in them doesn't increase the pressure too much, but a lot of, a lot of blood in them sure does increase the pressure, then that can be deduced. Additionally, what is happening to the volume of the blood in the ventricles? Well, it's flowing through the open valve from the pulmonic veins into the ventricle, so your volume is increasing. And furthermore, the pressure in the aorta, since this valve is closed, is decreasing. So that wasn't too bad. We answered those four questions just by looking at our um, diagram here. Now, my next question. How about when the AV and aortic valves are both closed? Well, so, right? Did you see that? It happened twice. So what are they talking about? Are they talking about the isovolumetric contraction or the isovolumetric relaxation? Well, hopefully that would be determined on your exam and you wouldn't have to wonder, but we can do both. That's fine. Um, let's start with the isovolumetric contraction because it's first on the little picture. Isovolumetric contraction. Oh my gosh. Well, when does that happen? Holy crap. That's a hard question. Well, not really if you drew your picture. Okay. It happens when both valves are closed twice. It happens first time. Let's look. When are my valves closed? Oh, look here, my AV valve is closed, and I knew my other valve, because I started like this, starts closed, okay, my, my aortic valve, so here we go. Right here, between the AV valve closed and the aortic valve opening, this little piece of time. Okay, so what's happening? Well, let's look. 
My AV valve is closed. Look at our little picture over here. Hopefully you can see it there. My aortic valve is closed. I'm having isovolumetric contraction because my, ventric my ventricles just shot off, just depolarized, just clamped down hard, long pressure. Okay, so atria, that's closed, so the pressure's increasing. Ventricle pressure, it's high, it's increasing, because that ventricle is contracting still. Ventricular volume, is it really changing since both Valves are closed? No. Aortic pressure decreasing because blood is constantly flowing into the systemic cir circulation. Okay? Are we good? Awesome. Now, next, what about the isovolumetric relaxation? Hmm. When does that happen? Okay, well, let's just check it out. Aortic valve opens. Hmm, aortic valve opens. Okay, that's opening. Oh, look, it closes, and the AV valve was closed here, so I have my isovolumetric relaxation. Hmm. Very good, very good. Anyway, between there, between that little period is my isovolumetric relaxation. What's happening? Well, everything's relaxing, hence the, hence the term, um, but I still have increasing pressure coming from the pulmonary veins here. <clears throat> What's happening to my pressure? Well, it's, it's decreasing slowly, and my volume is staying constant. And then, in my aorta, what's happening? Decreasing pressure. Oh my gosh, are we making this easy or what? I think we're gonna all ace the exam. Um, last one, what happens when the aortic valve is open? All right, where are you, aortic valve? You open here. I see that. I see you here. You're opening there. Now, this one is slightly tricky because the force needs to open this valve is really high. So, actually, we're going to start with the, with the easy one, the atrial. The pressure is increasing. Now, ventricular pressure is increasing because we're ejecting blood. Volume is decreasing because we're pushing it out. And in the aorta, the pressure is actually increasing because we just rammed a bolus of blood into there. So um, I think I, tr I tried to explain it. If there were some mistakes, um, I do apologize, but you get the gist and you should be able to answer most questions. I hope this helps. Um, all right. See ya.